Hello booktuber, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookies and Books. We are almost in September and that means Shorty September. Among other events, there are many events going on on booktube in September, but uh, the one I'm focusing on in this video is Shorty September. This one is the baby. Uh, it is uh, the brainchild of Sean and Bert at the Story Time and Heather at Soggy Expat Book Nerd. I'm going to leave links in the description box below, of course. And we are invited to read short books. So short is not defined. They suggest under 200 pages, but if for you it's under 250 or under 300 or under 100, it's up to you. You decide what short means to you. They have a whole bunch of prompts and they are presented in a zine. It's a zine. So go check Heather's video. It's, it's awesome. It's really awesome. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to follow the prompts. I decided to use Shorty September to travel around the world, to discover new authors and to discover literature from different countries. Um, I think of all the books that I have, only one of them is by an author I've already read. So all of these will be new to me authors and no, no, not all of them. No, it's not true. There's two or three of them. Yeah. Anyway, most of them will be by new to me authors and um, most of them are not most of them, but they are from different countries. There's only two countries that have more than one book, and that's Canada and France. Uh, it is just, it's just the way it happened. It, there are so many books that looked interesting that I decided to grab more than one books for these countries. Uh, the way that I chose the books, um, some of them are my own, and the vast majority of them are from the library. I went to the library and I just scanned the shelves for short books. And uh, so first visual cue, clue was uh, when the book was short. And then I looked at the name of the author and if it sounded a bit boring, and then I looked at it, does it look interesting or not? And then I would add it to my pile. And I would try to have as many countries as possible to, to sort of balance the reading, not to make it all Europe. That being said, it's from Europe that I have the most books. Uh, but I also have quite a few books from Africa, from um, the Caribbean, uh, a bit Asia. Uh, so I have books from a bit all over the world. And um, so, so that means that that I don't have any books for New Zealand or Australia because because the names don't sound boring. So if there was anybody named, I don't know, Mr. Smith, and suppose that Mr. Smith was born and raised in, in I don't know, in Mongolia and wrote in Mongolian, I would not have noticed the book because I would have just ignored Smith. Um, and so I started with the French shelves because when I read in translation, I tend to read in French. And I just, whenever there was a book that looked interesting and it was from a country that I did not have in my pile, I just put it in my bag, in my cloth bag. And then I just put it in the bag, in the bag, in the bag, until the bag was pretty much full. And that means I did not have time to browse the English shelves. Even though I have a few books in English, I had put them on hold. And um, even the, and I didn't have time to go browse the nonfiction shelves. So I may go back to the library for a second round of shorty books just to have a lot of choice because I do have a lot of choice already. I mean, I went just slightly berserk. Um, there are 30 books in there, 30 books um, that I borrowed today. So I think my bag weighed 30 pounds and I had to log this back home. And I walk, I walk to the library, so it was, um, yeah, it was not very good for the shoulders and not very good for the back. But anyway, I'll survive. I have books now. <laughs> so without further ado, the books that I have, um, and I'll tell you if I own it or if it's a, well, if, if I own it, because otherwise it's a library, most of them are for the library, from the library, 30 of them are from the library. Hi, this is Elizabeth from the future. While editing my video, I realized that I don't name the books. Not all the time, but basically three times out of four, I just show you the book. This is this. This is from this country. This is about this. But I don't mention the title or the author, which is rather stupid for a pile of possibilities video. So I'm going to list them all in the description box below. At first, I didn't want to do that because there are just too many books. But now I have to do it. I don't have a choice. So if you want more information about the books I talk about, just look in the description box and you'll have everything you need. <laughs> Back to regular footage. I will start close to home with Canada. So this is The Double Hook by Sheila Watson. I have no idea what it's about. It says modern classic. This is a book that I bought in Toronto. The next is House of Paper. No, wait. 
Paper Houses, sorry, Paper Houses by Dominique Forti. This is supposed to be about, this is supposed to be, I'm sure this is about Emily Dickinson, the poet Emily Dickinson. And the first time I saw the name of that book was actually in an Italian book. Uh, a bit earlier this year, I read Diary of a Tuscan Shop. Tuscan bookshop, sorry, Diary of a Tuscan bookshop. And it is a non-fiction about the owner of a small bookshop in a small village in Tuscany. And every day of the diary, she wrote down what the orders that she, that she received. So the, uh, the orders that customers, the, the books that customers ordered on the internet. And I saw the title of that book like three or four or five times. It was really popular. And I thought, wow, if there's a French Canadian book that is popular in Italy, I really should read it. And then this morning, there was an article in the newspaper La Presse in French. I'm going to leave a link to it in case you read in French. And it was about, um, about whether there should be mandatory reading in school, uh, whether reading in school reading should be taught for fun or for studying the classics and all of that or whatever. And the author of that article mentions this book. So I figured, OK, I got to read it. I got to read this. Next is um, A Season in the Life of Emmanuel by Marie-Claire Blais. Yes, Marie-Claire. Um, this one, this is an author that I've read before. I read her for the first time earlier this year and I read her in English of all things. Um, but I want to read something in French and this is supposed to be, uh, it, it's her most famous. So I don't know if it's her best, but it's her most famous. And it's a short book. Next, we have The Goddess of the Fireflies. This is another Canadian book, French-Canadian book. Uh, it looks like a library copy, but it's not. It's my copy. I found it in a little free library. Uh, so this is about a teenager in the 1990s who is a bit of a bit kind of rebelling, um, something like that. It's a coming of age story. So that's all that I know about this book. Next, we are leaving Canada and we are going to the United States. Well, kind of. This is The Tenth Men by, by Green, Graham Green. Uh, this is another modern classic. So I say we are kind of in the United States. In fact, the book is set in France. So this is set in France under the occupation. And the basic idea is that um, there's a bunch of hostages and one in 10 will be shot. So um, I don't know anything more about that. Next, I have The Underdogs, uh, a novel of the Mexican Revolution by Mariano Azuela. And this is a new rendition by Beth E. Jorgensen, based on the E. Mungia Jr. translation, introduction by Ilan Stavans. So there's a lot of people involved in this book. I have no idea what it's about. I figure it's about the Mexican Revolution. And of course, the book is representing Mexico. I'm sure you've guessed that. Now, uh, next, representing Cuba, this book. Uh, that is not translated in English. So the way that I looked for English translations or whether it was translated or not, I went on Goodreads, I typed the title of the book, and then there's always um, show detail and other editions. And then I look if there's an English edition. Um, and uh, generally, it's a pretty good indication. Uh, it, it, it is possible that there is an English translation somewhere, but that it is not logged in in Goodreads. It's possible, but it tends, it's rather rare. Um, so I don't believe this exists in English, but this represents Cuba. The next one, I don't believe is translated in English either. So this one represents Haiti. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know what the story is, but I just love this collection. Their covers are just so, so great. And I have a few more and the others that I have in this collection are also not translated in English. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully they exist in English somewhere. But anyway, so this is from Haiti. Um, and next, and next from Haiti, we jump quite south. We go all the way to Chile. This is Banzai. This is in French, but the title is the same in English. And it is by Alejandro Zambra. Um, I also have ordered from the library uh, White Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys, and she's representing Dominica. Uh, so that that's my contingent for the Americas. So the, these are the books I will read. Now we are jumping continent. We are going to Africa. Uh, representing South Africa, I have Evening Primrose by Copano Matalwa. I don't know if it's how it's pronounced. Um, this one I would like to read because I just participated in the Women's World Cup readathon. And the idea is that you are matched with a team and when your team loses you read a book by an author from that other country so my team was italy which is the reason why i read diary of a tuscan bookshop 
And then um, Italy lost to South Africa. But before the next match, I didn't have the time to, re to read a full book. So I just read an essay. Um, and in the essay, there was a poem. So I read a poem and an essay. But this book, I feel like I owe a book to South Africa. So it, it could be this. Next from Angola, translated from the Portuguese is... This one is translated in English. Just give me a chance to look at my sheet of paper. It is A General Theory of Oblivion by José Eduardo Agualusa. I don't know how to pronounce Portuguese. Um, so this is the story of a woman in 1975 who suffers from agoraphobia. And this is during the revolution. I don't know if it's a revolution, but the uh, when Angola becomes independent. So the end of colonization, I guess. And uh, it's the story of that woman who just hides in the apartment and see a whole bunch of people coming in and coming out. I don't know exactly what it is, but it, it sounds interesting. And it says that this woman really existed. So that's another thing that's kind of fascinating. Uh, this one, this one is a translation in English. Let me check. No, it does not appear to have been translated in English. So this one is translated from Arabic, but from Tunisia. So representing Tunisia. Um, I have no idea what it's about, but who cares? It's from Tunisia. This one represents Morocco. So translated from the Arabic again, but Arabic from Morocco. So this is the punishment by... Um, Tahar Ben Jaloun. So this is a story of uh, students, I believe, um, of 84, no, 94 students who were punished for having, uh, for having spoken against the king. Um, and uh, that was in 1965. So what happened is that they were called for military service. That was the official excuse. But in fact, they were imprisoned and they were basically tortured. So this is the very happy story of that event. Um, and then uh, representing Egypt. So again, translated from the Arabic, but Egypt, hunger. So uh, this is about people who are hungry. So I think it's about a poor family and uh, they, they don't have enough money to eat. I think that's the idea. But yeah, short little book, I, I, that's the thing with short little books. I often don't care what they are about. I just, I just read them. And then we are moving on to Asia. So another book translated from Arabic, but this time representing Lebanon. This one is, I know, the, 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 what's the title of this one? Voices of the Lost by Hoda Barakat. Um, so this, this, this one sounded fun. So there's somebody who writes a letter and the person dies before he has the time to mail it. Somebody else finds it and decides to write a letter and that person also dies before being able to send it. And this letter sort of goes from person to person to person. And um, that, that, that's the story. So it sounded really fun. Um, so from Lebanon. This one, Zora by Zoya Pirzad is... The Space Between Us. Uh, I've read a collection of short stories by this author. She is from Iran, so she represents Iran. This book is translated from the Persian. And um, she is Armenian, so she, she represents a minority within Iran. Um, and this, th th this is about, I think, two kids who grow up near the Caspian Sea. Uh, something like that. It, sound, it sounded good. It just sounded a lot of fun. Okay, and the next three, there are... No, the next... The next three are not translated and the next two are part of this collection. I really love this Zulma editions there. They're just wonderful. So this one is translated from the Tamil and uh, it is way more than 200 pages. I did not realize it, but I just love the cover so much. And I was just going looking for books from around the world and I just did not notice that this one was not short. But I borrowed it and eh? it doesn't cost anything. Worst comes to worst, I don't read it. Oh, and that one was representing Sri Lanka. Uh, and the next one is representing China, but I did not find any English title for that book. So if we translate it word for word, it would be the Hotel of the Swan. So the Swan Hotel. This is a story of a maid who wants to become rich and decides to kidnap the kid that she is, of who she's the nanny. So she's not a maid, she's a nanny. And she decides to kidnap the kid and ask for a ransom. But while she kidnaps the kid, the father is denounced for corruption and everybody's imprisoned the entire family some people are shot i don't know if they die but they all go anyway they they, they lose their status they lose their money they anyway so so she's stuck with the kid <laughs> sounded kind of fun it's dreadful but it sounded fun um this one's another one that kind of said does not appear to be translated in english 
Um, and uh, this is one represents Japan. So this is a story of a, a dam uh, that, that is being built. And with the building of that dam, uh, a village will be submerged. And it is, uh, I think it's during the night. Is it the night or the morning? Anyway, it's when the population of the village has to leave. So it's the story of their exile. It's supposed to be rather poetic according to the back cover. Okay, we are now moving to Europe, I guess. Um, I say I guess because the first one, Sofki, is not translated in English. So if we look at the library copy, it's a Canadian book. So the author lives in Canada and this appears to be the only publication of that book. However, it says, translated from Russian and the author was born in Georgia. So I don't know exactly which country that book represents. I'm going to say it represents the Soviet Union because it's about Soviet, Soviet people. Um, so I'm going to say it represents the Soviet Union, even though it doesn't exist anymore. Representing Russia, we have Just the Plague by Ludmila Ulitskaya. It is, it is set in 1939. It's about a biologist uh, that, is, uh, that, that must present uh, his or her, his, his, um, his results of various researchers. Next, representing Sweden, an elderly lady is up to no good. I, I love the book, the format of the book. It's just, it's a teeny tiny little thing. So this is a mass market paperback. And look at this, it's even smaller and it's hardcover. So uh, anyway, th this one was recommended a lot by, I think it was Anja from uh, en en Anja's book, book, book Chatter, uh, I think. Uh, but I think it was recommended by a lot of people. So this is about an elderly lady who is up to no good. <laughs> Sound fun. Representing Iceland. Um, I think that's another one that is not translated. Um, indeed, it is not translated. So this is a story of a painter who lives in a caravan in the wilderness. So really far from any urban center in uh, Iceland. And he just paints and he lives alone and then... And then I think he, he's a bit along with his thoughts, but also with his art and with the artist that he admires. So th this, this is going to be rather poetic and artistic. Next, a classic representing England that probably everybody knows. 84 Charing Cross Road um, by Helen Hanf. So this is nonfiction and this is an epistolary uh, relation between two people. And I've never read that. And I know it's an absolute classic, but I've never read that. So uh, I'm very excited to read this one. Next, one of my own books uh, representing, I suppose, Germany, because it's translated from German, uh, Siddhartha. However, it is set in India. So this is uh, by uh, Hermann Hess. And I've heard so much good of that author, Hesse, but I've never read him. So this, this would be my first Hermann Hesse. Also representing Germany. Oh, I had forgotten I had to for Germany. Uh, so this one is in French. Uh, in English, it is Guilt Stories uh, by um, Ferdinand von Schirach. Uh, so the author is a lawyer and a, who, who specializes in criminal law, and he decided uh, to write short stories based on certain cases that he had. Uh, not, not necessarily his cases, but cases that he witnessed, that he saw. And uh, I read another uh, collection of his short stories, and I think it was simply called Crimes. And this one is sort of a sequel, and th the first one I really loved. I really, really loved. So I'm sure this one is just as good. Next, representing Belgium, Thirst. I had hunger a bit later, now I have Thirst by Amélie Nothon. I wish I could tell you what this book was about. Look at, that, that's the back cover, and these are the flaps. Freaking nothing. You're supposed to know that Amélie Nothon is famous, and you're supposed to know that, you're supposed to want to read all of her books. Or perhaps, yeah, she, she's that kind of author. She's so famous that the content of her books do not matter. The, the publishers and the booksellers, they are at the point where they just put the face and the name of the author on the cover and the content of the book does not matter at all. It's going to be a bestseller. I've read two or three of her books and I have to say that I'm not necessarily a super fan. So I wanted to try her again. So a short book, she only writes short books anyway. So you could do a shorty September just with Nothom's books. Uh, but I thought I would try it again. And why did I pick, there was a whole bunch of them at the library, like almost a full shelf of Nothom books. And I don't know why I picked this one. I just picked this one. They, they were all the same, all the same uh, spine, all the same covers or almost and none of them had explanations at the back. 
So I just picked one, and I guess because it was the shortest title, I don't know. Uh, perhaps I was thirsty and somehow it played in my, in my subconscious. I don't know. Uh, next, we have a bunch of books representing France. So one of my own books, The Black City by Georges Sand. So this is a 19th century classic. And it is about um, industrialization. I think it's about people working in... I think it's in a coal, a coal mining city or something like that. Anyway, sounded good. Um, a new release. Uh, uh, the, the, the name of the author of the author attracted my attention because uh, with the name like that I figured well this book is going to be from Africa but it doesn't look like it. Uh, the, the back doesn't say anything about where the author is from um, so I have to assume that she's from France and I, I read the first page and it just really sounded fun. It sounds it, it looks like it is set in Paris because it talks about a metro station that I believe is in Paris so uh, I so I think it's um it's set in Paris but there's something exotic about it uh, because um, that the person it's about a healer it's about a grandmother teaching her granddaughter how to be a healer so there's a there's a bit of there's a bit of africa in this even though it's not um it's a french book but there's a bit it's not it's not the france of françoise sagan or jean dormesson it's just uh, it's a different france so i i thought this was uh, this looked interesting and it's a brand new release from 2023 uh, next, this one. This one has a title in English. This is this is a long way off by uh, Pascal Garnier. So I've never read this author. However, the, the back here it says that he won a prize for dark humor. So I thought, okay, so I want to read that. And it's part of this collection that whose cover I just love. So it's another Zulma books. And then the other one, you probably know the author. This is Anielno, and the title in English is Simple Passion. So just read it backwards. And uh, this is about, well, it says I'm on the back. Um, starting from September of last year, I did nothing else except wait for a man that he calls me, that he comes to my place. Something like that. It's very, very short. It's like 75 pages, and the, the, the pages, the font is huge. Uh, so this is going to be a quick read. Uh, so Erno is one of the authors that I've read before. Now we are moving to Italy to another author that I've read before. This is Grazia Deleida, The Church of Solitude. This is her last novel. Uh, apparently it's the one that is the most personal. It's about a woman who has breast cancer and Deleida had breast cancer at the time. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is going to be a bit, uh, I think, heart-wrenching a little bit. But it's supposed to be... Uh, not necessarily, um, it's not a tearjerker, it's just uh, a reflection and it's uh, it's a book by an author who kind of realizes that their end is coming. So this is always, it's touching, it's very touching, I assume. The next one, perhaps maybe I borrowed just because there was a dog in a trench coat on the cover. Uh, so this one is translated from the Catalan, so it is uh, representing Spain. And the title in English is The Art of Wearing a Trench Coat. And I think this is a collection of, can it be a collection of short stories? Yeah, despite being very short, it's a collection of short stories. Um, so yeah, this sounds fun. Then representing Portugal. Uh, this author is very famous, Gonzalo M. Tavares. I say that because uh, he has written a lot and he, he's, he's been translated a lot. However, this book does not appear to be translated in English. I just did not find it. Uh, for this one, I also looked in WorldCat. So it's a catalog. A, it's sort of a worldwide catalog of, li of library catalogs. It's an aggregator of li library catalogs. I think that's the best way to play it, to, to put it. And I did not find anything in English for that book. So it does not look like it's been translated. Next, representing a Czech Republic. Uh, the title in English of this one is Dancing Lessons for the Advanced in Age. Uh, so again, I don't know what it's about. It just sounded fun. And finally, the last, uh, not, not, not finally, no, there's another one. Oh, okay, I'll go for this one first. Uh, so. Possibilities. Greek plays. Uh, of course, this book is huge, but there's a bunch of little Greek plays in the middle. Um, I've read all the ones by Sophocles, so I have some Aeschylus and some Euripides left. So I may read some of those. And then finally, a book that I don't know which country it represents. Um, so it's it's a Serbian author. It was written in Serbian. However, it is set in Mongolia. And the title in English is A Travel Guide to Mongolia, but it's obviously not a travel guide. So um, the back cover, it's written this way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's it, perhaps I, I'm discovering a new, um, a new 
publishing house that, that sounds interesting, that does things a bit differently. So um, it says on the back, a writer coming from a shit country to who sometimes thinks he's a fly. Um, a Dutch bishop who is lost in a dream, a Russian officer who became a llama, an American journalist who is working for a newspaper that doesn't exist anymore, um, a, liv a living dead from France who has a, I don't know, dirty past. I don't know how to say the word in English. It's lubric, libidinous, a libidinous past. And then an Italian psychanalyst who has, um, or they are all reunited, they are all meeting one another at a bar in a hotel in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. So it just sounded completely absurd and I thought, yeah, that's going to be fun. So I translated from the Serbian. Um, yeah, so, so that was the last book that I have borrowed and the last book that I perhaps maybe could read for uh, Shorty September. Um, that being said, as I said, I may go back to the library for another haul for some nonfiction. Uh, because there's just 84 Charing Cross Road that is non-fiction in there, so I need more non-fiction. But at the same time, I also want to read my own books, so uh, I, I don't want to use September just to read library books. I want to read my own books. I have plenty of them. Um, so with that, does it mean that I'm going to do 30 books in 30 days? No, it is not. Um, because for me, it doesn't really mean anything. It's not very important to read 30 books in 30 days. I can understand the thrill of the challenge, uh, but uh, I, I'm not in the mood for it. So I'm, I'm not even going to try. So whether I do read 30 books in 30 days or not, it doesn't matter. Um, I may well be, I may well do, because many of them, many of the books I presented are well under 200 pages. There's a whole bunch of them that are barely 100 pages. Um, and with fonts big like this and a lot of white space on the, on the page. So I, I could very well read 30 books in 30 days, but it's not a challenge that I want to do. However, uh, I've seen, uh, well, it's a challenge that's been around for quite a while. Uh, Roz is doing it from Scally Dandling About the Books. And recently I've just seen um, Risha from uh, For the Love of Classics who decided to try a Read Around the World challenge. And that one is perhaps a bit more tempting. So it's not something that I want to do in one year. But again, I don't know if I want to do it that much. I, I have a lot of fun reading books from all over the world. That I really love. However, I'm wondering if trying to read a book from each country might be a bit overkill. Because for some countries, I, I have to assume that what is available translated in English or translated in, for me in French it could work too is not necessarily something I would want to read. Um, teeny tiny countries, geographically and in population, tend not to have a lot of publication house, not a lot of writers. So what will come out is very often the work of an expat, somebody who is living abroad. Um, so in that sense, am I really reading a book from, I don't know, Fiji or from Sao Tome in Principe? Or am I reading a book by somebody who is living in the United States? Um, so the, there's that. And also the idea, that I would be wondering while I'm reading books that perhaps maybe don't really like, um, just to tick a box, the box being the country, um, th that would be time that I'm not spending reading a book that I would really love. Um, and yeah, so I'm thinking about it. It could be fun just to see perhaps without getting too much out of my way, see how easily I could do it. And once once, um, once I've done that, um, perhaps reevaluate, see if I want to go for every country on the planet. Uh, because new countries are being created every year. Um, <laughs> I say that, I don't know if it's every year, but new countries appear once in a while. Uh, the most recent country, I think, is South Sudan. Um, so that's a new country. Um, Anyway, um, so yeah, I I'm thinking about it. So if you've done the country, the, the, the country, if you've done the challenge of reading a book from every country, or if you are thinking about it, let me know in the comments, is it worth it or not? That's what I'm wondering. Is it worth it to go into every teeny tiny corner, corner of the planet? Uh, it's a round planet, but I guess you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's it. So that's my uh, possibilities for Shorty September. There's absolutely no way I'm reading all of this. I'm just going to 
pick some books in this giant pile and um, I'll let you know what I think of these books when I read them. And let me know in the comments if you've read them, uh, if you if you think they're good, and if you have recommendations within within these 40-something books. I think it's 40-something, about 40 books that I've presented. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!